Hey everybody, John Sandy with you once again for Art Full of Fun, which means we're here to have fun. Our subject for today is going to be fun with borders and letters. Sounds quite involved, doesn't it? Well, not so bad. We'll go through it step by step and have a good time together. How about it? Okay, so let's begin with some the materials you're going to be needing for this project. Now, when I say need, these are the ones I've used, but let me remind you real quickly that in this project, you could do this with as little as a six by six sheet of white construction paper, a pencil and eraser, a Sharpie, and your choice of another medium like crayons, colored pencils, markers, even watercolors. A lot of different choices, but reminding you right up front that it does not require a lot, but I'm gonna show you how I'm using various mediums to do this, and then we're going to uh, break them down for you, okay? So let's start with the materials. Pencil, eraser. If you want to, and you have it, tag board, uh, crayons, markers, colored pencils, a ruler, scissors, glue stick, and uh, white and black construction paper, and if you can, some various light colors, like yellow, pink, light blue, light green, and those types of colors. Okay, so let's get started. And let me let you know that concerning these materials, um, I, can, I wanna make some recommendations. If you can, and you may not be able to, if you can use watercolors, I think Creole is one of the best, and there are some others like Sergeant. Uh, colored pencils. Uh, Prisma colors are wonderful if you are able to get those. Uh, crayons, as with another project we did, construction crayons by Crayola, and also markers. Two great sets of colors I love by Crayola are bright and tropical. That's two different sets of colors, and they're absolutely wonderful. So let's get started. Let's talk about now our key words that we're going to use today. We're going to talk about patterns bubble letters, serif and sans serif lettering, block letters, 3D letters, and our final step, if you choose to participate, are is called an art quilt. All right, so let's begin. Let's start talking, first of all, about uh, types of letters, okay? And you know what? This is a lot of fun. Um, we can do letters different ways. One I love is called bubble lettering. Now, it's always good for every artist to have their own style of the alphabet and lettering. And I'll give you a quick example. I was subbing one day in a school and I was subbing for the art teacher and they asked me, hey, could you do a banner for something for us today? Well, that's quite a task if you're just a substitute, but I happen to be an art teacher substituting and I happen to have my own style of lettering. So let me give you just a little example. Let's say that I want to create a word like joy. Now this is called bubble lettering. And I, I like to outline my lettering sometimes when I can. So there's the word joy. Okay, fun, simple. All right, let's erase that. Let me do one more for you. A very common, lovable word, love. And of course, I like to outline things. I think it just adds a little more dimension to what you're doing, a little more style and creativity. So there's the word love. Okay, fun, right? Okay, so let's talk about different types of lettering other than those are called bubble letters. And it'd be great if you can develop your own style of lettering, okay? Let's talk about block lettering. What does that mean? What well, simply means if you have a block, you put your letter in that block, the letter L, okay? Let's say you want to do the letter T. So I have a block. Whatever the size of block, whether it be square or rectangle, we do the letter in that block. It's very rigid, very very um, uh, simply thought out and uh, done in a block. So there's another idea for you, a block letter. And even block letters can take some different directions. Like for example, if I have a block and I want to do the letter O, I could do this. Okay, so I have the letter O, okay? So, now, that's block lettering, and I just mentioned bubble lettering. Now let's talk about 3D letters. 
Okay, let's say I have the letter H. What you do is you go to the corner of your letter and you put a slight angle down on each corner. Very simple, right? Then connect them. And this one right here. Okay, the letter H in 3D. Simple, right? But let's say your letter has curves in it. Let's say the lowercase i, which I think is fun. Okay, so I do my angles, right? Okay. You come off the uh, round with an angle, and you just simply follow that around, and let it disappear, then do the rest of it. Okay, so there's your lowercase 3D I. Let's do one more. How about the letter S? And I love doing the letter S. Okay, so I do my angles. I don't do an angle here because it curves, right? But when you're starting at the top, you will put a, an angle. And you will follow that around, and you'll put a curve inside there. Now watch what I do here. You could do it, you could do a straight line down and go around, or you could simply follow that curve. Let me get rid of that for you. Follow that curve all the way around and angle the end because it does have a point to it. So that's another way. And see, you can do the back side of this. Just curve it around and follow it and let it disappear. So you now have the letter S. A little bit sloppy, but wanted at least to share that with you. So you have your 3D letters. You have your block letters, and you have your bubble letters. Now, there is a word called serif, and a word called sans serif. Interesting, right? Okay, a serif lettering is simply a letter with feet. Let's say the letter I, and I add feet to that. I have feet on the I, and that's a serif lettering, okay? Now, there's different styles you can do serif lettering. You could do, uh, let's say we're doing the I over again. You can make it a little fancier, and do a little curves in, and there is a letter I, capital I, with the serif feet curved into it. So that's what serif lettering is. Serif has angles on the outside of the letter. Think like the letter M. That's called serif. Now, sans serif is simply like a block letter or any other style letter that does not have the feet. Like if I do a bubble S, then I don't have, I won't have to worry about um, any feet on that because this is like sans serif. And that is S-A-N-A, -A, and then the second word S-E-R-I-F, okay? So serif and sans serif, okay? So this is a sans serif letter, no feet on it at all. Now, I went over those because we're going to use a letter in the middle of our project, and we'll talk about the different styles there. We'll have a lot of fun with this. Okay, now, let's talk about borders, okay? Now, you don't have to do this. I'm just trying to give you some ideas, but I have created with some tag board, and what is tag board? It's a stiffer, thicker board, so if you want to cut a pattern out and trace with it, it doesn't fold up on you easy. It's a little stiffer. See that? And I have made four patterns, all square. Four by four inch, five by five inch, five and a half by five and a half inch, and six by six inch. Now why do I have those four? So that if you don't want to freehand or use a ruler to make your borders, uh, then you can use these. Like for example, six by six would be the size of my paper, the whole size. Now if I want to do a border inside there, I can put that in the center, five and a half by five and a half, and I have a quarter inch all the way around, I can trace that and create a border. Or I could go directly down to the five and put a border that's closer together. There you go. And you will go all the way around with a half inch border all the way around with five by five. And then you get down to where, even if you just use the six and the four to make one, and we'll be doing this, um, draw that and you have your center, which we'll put our letter in, and our border. Now, why don't we talk about borders at all? Borders are really neat. Every once in a while, I like to do a project where the students uh, create borders on our artwork. Why? Because it really pulls your artwork together and gives it a neat trim and allows you to be creative on the outsides as well. So let me do some examples here for you so you can follow along. My goal here is if you will take the challenge is to do four six by six blocks. 
however you decide to do the borders. You could freehand them. You could do wavy lines for a border. My goodness, you could do all kinds of fun stuff. Have fun with this. Do not feel bound by any ideas that I give you. I'm just gonna give you a handful of many, many possibilities. Okay, so this is the side. I want you to try to do four different ones. And keep in mind, remember I mentioned earlier that you don't have to have all these materials. You can actually do a whole design and just Sharpie on white paper or Sharpie on another color paper and do a whole design like that with just black and white. It's really, really cool. And it's challenging too. But we talk about patterns a little bit as well and so we'll go into that. So here's our four patterns that I got made of tag board. So if you need to um, do this, prepare this ahead of time with tag board and cut them out, okay? So there we go. There's our patterns if you want to make borders that way. Let's start with our very first one. Now, in this example, let me pull off my board. I don't think I'm gonna need that right now. Um, here is an example for you. And what I did was, what is this? This is a serif K because it has feet on it, doesn't it? Very good, guys. Do you see what I did? I took my six inch paper, six by six inch, and I took my three stencils that I showed you earlier, ta-da, and I laid them in different ways and let, let them overlap, and then in the center one, I put my letter. So that's my first step, is to do it in pencil, then go over it with a Sharpie to make it really stand out more for me, okay? And then I take that design, and I decide I'm gonna use geometric shapes because I want to keep it kind of simple. Now you'll notice I left the K by itself. I didn't want it to get so busy that you lose the K. So I'll let the K blank, that'll be a solid color. Then I put squares in the first box, triangles in the next box, and ovals and circles in the next box. And I'll let the whole out of border rim open for one color. So that's what I did. So that's easy, that's fun, and it was fun too. Then. I color it. Ta-da. I say ta-da a lot, don't I? Okay, anyway, there you go. I colored it in. Here's where I used my colored construction crayons. And they're absolutely wonderful, as I've mentioned before. And they're fun. But you'll notice I was trying to, I tried to be really careful to not have any more chicken scratches than necessary. Again, chicken scratches are where you let the white of the paper or the color of the paper show through and you don't color in very well. If you take your time and think out your colors, like for example, when I used yellow, I moved yellow around. When I used orange, I used orange mostly there, so I didn't use it much more, just a little bit more. And then I took another color and I moved that color around. I took this color and moved it around. That gives me balance. We talked about this in another project earlier. So there you go, the finished project. Right there, and that was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's go on to our next one. And man, I tell you guys, there's all kinds of things you can do. And we're gonna talk more about that. Okay, here we go. So I started out with using the five and a half and the four uh, tag board to draw these two shapes. So what do I have? I have two borders and my center for my letter. Simple, right? I bet. And you could go do all four of yours just like this do one of them with just black and white, do one with another two colors, three colors. You could do random colors, patterns of colors, two, three patterns of colors. So there's our border. Then after I did that, I went in and I did a bubble letter and I did it in 3D. Notice how when I come out of it and I curve into the curves, I curve into the curves with my 3D, so keep that in mind. And I did my patterns. Now, here's one thing that's kind of fun. Again, I left my outer border totally open to color. I did something with my edges, my corners, to start out with. They're all the same. But notice how these sides match and these sides are different and match. I want to keep that balance going. I got two stars up here, all the way on the other end, two stars down here, three wavy lines, three wavy lines, creating balance all over my paper, and this is my centerpiece. So there is my second example, ready to color. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. So here we go. Nice, okay. I used colored markers this time. Notice some of the colors. This is what I mean by the bright and tropical markers by Crayola. Absolutely wonderful. Tried to leave few, if any, chicken scratches anywhere. Thought out my colors, what colors get really good together. And of course, I love blue and green together, make an aqua, so sometimes I'll put blue and green next to each other. And I have light green, so you get some light green markers. Traditionally growing up, a marker was usually pretty dark unless it was yellow or 
orange. These new colors coming out give you an awful lot of opportunities. I used yellow from my outer border to keep it soft. I threw some yellow in here, but I didn't do the same on each end, but I stayed with two warm colors. So I just played off a pattern here, played off a pattern here, patterns here, here, and here, and then I centered this orange to really catch the eye to do that. Nice, huh? Okay, so there's our second one. So I hope you enjoyed looking at that one. That was one that was just absolutely delightful to do. And now I'm gonna give you a bigger challenge. Now you do not have to do this with your artwork, okay? I use black paper. I love black paper with colored pencils. I absolutely love them, you'll see why in a minute. Now, I first did my two borders. Now you don't have to do both these borders, but I did. And then I did a large O. Now this is, this is a, what they call sans serif. There's no limbs or legs on these, limbs, legs on these or feet. So anyway, so we got that done. And that's our first step, you see what I did. I did it in white pencil so I could see everything and show it to you, okay? Then, after I did that, I took the next step and I did the borders. Again, my corner borders are the same, that flow out. The left and right are the right, the same. The top and the bottom are the same. You notice that they're a little bit different, but I carry that pattern all the way around and then on the inside, I change the pattern again. You can see that. And then on the inside around the letter, I did some really cool wavy lines and left the letter open because I had some plans for this. Now what are they? Values, the lighter tint, light or shade of a color, how light, how dark it gets. With colored pencils, especially with things like Prisma colored pencils, you can fade colors into another color, you can fade colors into black, you can do all kinds of cool stuff, let me show you. All right, here we go. Yeah, isn't that awesome? And I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, I faded my blue into the black. I balanced my colors this way. I used a lot of warm colors because I was working on black paper. And even my cool colors were not real, real dark. Like see my palette, not dark. Now watch what else I did. Not only did I fade it here, I faded inside too. Where the light goes to dark, I went dark to light to throw a contrast between the inside and outside of that O. So it really stood out. And in some places, I would fade a color into black or fade the color into another color in these wavy lines. The rest of it is all solid colors. I love that. Okay, so that's three of them. So what about a fourth one? Because we have to have four of them, right? All right, here's our challenge on our fourth one. Now again, you don't have to do this because if you just have white paper, you have fun with white paper. Do not let it bother you that I'm doing other things. I'm just challenging you. If you ever get a chance to, you can do some more. So what I did next was, I cut some color sheets out. There we go, right there. I cut that one out, and I used two different soft colors. I wanna keep them light so my markers or pencils or crayons will show up nice and bright. So there's one idea, okay? Another idea is orange with pink. And there's a lot of choices here. And again, boy, they, they come up with some really cool light colors and tropical colors as well that you could work with. Okay, that is pink and orange, okay? Then I took one, took one, and I went ahead and did the designs on it. Now that's a 3DM with some circles in it. I left the background open for now, and I did my background. Notice again, my top and bottom match, my left and right match. They can match on all four corners like one of mine did. And notice how I did the edges, I did something special on the edges, that draws the eye into the M. You got that soft blue with the pink. So there you go. So this is our fourth one. So what we're gonna do is, we are gonna take a pattern, one, I'll choose one, and we are gonna do one together, okay? So, and I've got for me a whole set uh, Prisma colored pencils I want to work with. Okay, whole set. Not a whole, not the whole set. I got a large pack, but I picked out some basic colors that I thought I would like to work with. So there they are, all sharp and ready to go. All right. So the first thing we want to do is I'm not going to do mine on pencil first. I'm just going to go directly, directly to the sharpie, and I'm going to do a design on this paper for us to color in. So you get yours ready. And let's do one together. Even if it's just not one you want to use later, uh, it'd be a great start for you to do that. So I'm going to do a bubble letter V. Okay? That's on the inside. So I'm just going to have fun with the... I'm just going to let it flow and have fun. And I want to be free like this, like cartoonish. Okay? 
And then on the inside of that, I'm gonna do different sizes of circles. Now you can do the same size of circles, which you'll probably put them in a row. That's all right, it's a little more boring. An artist is always looking for an opportunity to create something that makes it stand out. So the different size of circles really help a lot, okay? Now let's go to our border for just a moment. I'm gonna do the, I, again, I'm gonna do my corners the same. I'm gonna do almost a football shape. That's like a frowny face and smiley face with a line through it, kind of like a leaf. So I'm gonna do all four corners like that. Not that I have to, I don't. But it sure is a simple way to keep continuity and your eye flowing around the border. Borders are wonderful. You can do some awesome stuff with borders. They really make your artwork come alive. Okay, now let's do the top and the bottom. Watch what I do. I do a line straight up, the bottom and top. Okay. I go to the bottom here, and I curve over to the top of my leaf on both sides. Now I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm actually gonna turn it so I can see exactly what I'm doing. I don't want to think upside down that way. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna do my sides. My sides, not, not a lot different, but a little bit. Instead of doing a straight line, I'm gonna do kind of like a, almost a V shape on the top and bottom in the center. I wanna break up the design a little bit because it is a fairly simple design. And I do that on purpose. Now, I wanna run two lines through there, but I don't go through that V. And I don't go through the leaves, I just go to the edge. So you can take a look at that. Okay, let's go to the other side. Two lines over to the leaf, or leaf shape. All right, how about that? Okay, now, let's do something a little uh, fun also. And that is, now this may be a little tricky for some of you, so you don't have to do it this way. In fact, you can do just straight lines if you want, okay? I'm gonna to go to the center of this and put a little dot, and I'm gonna do a curved line going out and stopping. Now I'm going behind the letter V, so I don't want See, I'm curving it. I come out from the center and I curve it out This is so much fun. So I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I need one more. And I'll tell you why here in just a second, I need one more. They don't have to be even. Hey guys, this doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just have fun with it, okay? All right, there we go. Now, we have our drawing. Now we're gonna color. And I'll color a section, we'll do a little speed up on this so that it doesn't take a long time to watch. But I get my colors out, and I, hit, like I remember, I'm working with colors already. This isn't white. So I think about what would really be cool on top of those. What would really stand out? You can think compliments if you want. I'm going to color in my leaf on one side. Boy, look how that covers, isn't that nice? These Prismacolor pencils are so awesome. I love them on black paper, but they work on anything. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk while I'm doing this one, but as I work on these, uh, I'm going to be quiet <laughs> so they can have the opportunity to speed this up if they want. Okay, so I'm liking this already. Okay, so there's my first color. I can leave the other side light blue, or I could, use another color. I'm gonna come back to that, okay? So now I'm gonna work on something else. How about my circles inside my V? I could leave them all the color yellow. So if I want to do that, I may pick another color for the um, inside around the circles.
Now, once I've done that, you can tell there's not a lot of difference between the yellow and that yellow orange that I'm using. I'll go back and see if I can fill in some little chicken scratches because kids know I hate chicken scratches. Yep. And it, and it makes it look so much nicer when you take your time. Really take your time to do things right. It, boy, it, you could fade this color down if you want to into another color. There's just so many things you could do. Okay? Now, I've got that in there. Now, I think I'm going to pick random colors for my circles. I may be some of them yellow. But watch what I do. I'm picking this color first, and I'm going to color in. Ooh, isn't it wonderful? Ooh, I love it. Uh, I'm going to pick another color. Put it here. Make sure I get all my chicken scratches so it really looks like it's uh, printed out. Now watch what I do. I'm using that color, but I'm not done with it. I'm going to move this color around and try to do at least two or three more in that color. I want to move it around because this gives balance to your project. It keeps the eye moving and it doesn't get stuck. Okay? So let's do one more. I'm studying it as I go. I'm learning as I go. I'm experimenting as I go right along with you guys. Having fun with it. I could do a circle where it fades from one color to another inside the circle. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Okay, let's move to another color. Let's see how this works. Oh, yes. One way to fill in without chicken scratches is to use the side of your pencil in a circular motion and fill it in. Now let's move around and do some of these. I got two of them there. Let's go one more. I love that color. That is a wonderful color. Isn't that awesome? I'm enjoying this. Are you? Hope you are. Okay, let's go to another color. There's no reason why we can't use a few dark colors in here because we are using very light paper. But this is really coming along nicely. And I, I know yours is as well. I know you're gonna do awesome on this. Because I tell you what, I've given my students through the years in the Kanawha High School some really ch great challenges. And every single time they come through, they are absolutely amazing. I always challenge my kids to do more than they think they can do. Or maybe I may wonder if they can do. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that one just like that to get everybody's attention. Okay, so I have that. Let's move on to the next one. How about this part? Now, I could do yellow, color, yellow, color, all the way around. That's why I have an even number of colors is so that I have a, a number of spaces between them. So now I'm going to go ahead and pick another color and watch what I do. I go to the center. See how I'm going a circular motion and really nice and dark, see that? But as I get out there, this is so much fun, I'm going to lighten this almost to the color yellow. Now again, your eye will mix the color of the paper with your pencil to create a new color. This is so cool. Notice how I'm going a circular motion. I'm watching the pressure build up your color. Is that not cool? Now I'm gonna skip one and do the next one. Again, you can't see the center of these swirls. Kind of reminds you a little bit of a peppermint sucker or something, doesn't it? Candy stripe sucker. Now watch what I do. I start solid and I slowly fade it out into the color yellow. Now what this will do is give you a dimension to your artwork that really draws people in. They'll look at that and go, oh man, look what they just did. That looks so real. It's almost like I could pick it up. Well, we can do shadows like this. In one of our other projects, we did compliments. Excuse me, fun with compliments. Because <laughs> that's what this is all about, having fun. And I trust all my students are enjoying their time off and being nice to each other. All right, let's skip another one. Let's keep going. I kind of told you I was going to stop talking, didn't I? Well, I will here in a minute. I'm going to get into these bigger areas here and I'll stop talking so we can fast forward this a little bit for you guys. You know, you can always stop the video and pick it back up again. Take your time. I may do this in a matter of minutes, but if you do it, it may take you two or three days. You never know. And don't feel bad about that. 
That just means you really care about what you're doing, and that impresses me. All right, got one more. See how I spaced them out? Make sure you have an even number of wavy lines so that when you're done, uh, you have a space between every color if you pick the color I picked. Okay, so I'm gonna move on out. It's gonna be dark at first. Not very far out because a lot of it's hidden by the letter V. And I go around. This is so much fun, okay. You want that contrast from dark to light to really capture the, the person that's uh, watching you or looking at your artwork. All right, there we go, all right. So now, let's move on. Now, we have this purple color here, and I know that I have blue there already. I know that, but you know, I just like the color. So I'm gonna do my own light blue, which is a little darker. Now what this means is if I decide to leave the color blue paper somewhere else, then I have this shade of blue that's a little different. It's like a leaf, and a lot of times the way the leaves fold, it's a shadow on one side of the vein and light on the other side, like a light green or dark green. And we have a lot of fun with the leaves and projects we do. All right, so we know where we're at, so there we go. Put that back in position so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I got those two colors going. I don't know why, folks, but I'm just kind of seeing red on these corners here, and I don't know why that is, but I do, and I want to do something really special with that, okay? So let's start with this color. I don't know, it just seemed like they just need to be really bright. You want contrast. That doesn't mean you have to have a lot of contrast, but yeah, it just does something for your picture when you can show some direction and misdirection that we've talked about in an earlier project or two. Okay, so let's line that up and let you look at it. See how that stands out? I love that. Okay, now, I want balance. So I'm gonna throw red in there again, but you know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna start out with the bright red and let it fade into the blue. Now what do you get if you put red and blue together? You get purple. Now your eye isn't gonna show you exactly a purple, but I'm telling you, if this blue is a little darker, this red mixed with it would give you a nice purple tone. But I wanted to, I wanna see some more dimension here, so I wanna do that. See that? Okay, let's do the opposite. So cool. And these Prismacolor pencils. Now I know there's other brands. Dick Blick has their own brand out that's similar to Prismacolors. I have not used those yet. I expect they're very good. I buy a lot from them. But Prismacolors are what illustrators use to do books and stuff. So it's really kind of cool. Because, you know, you're a professional. You can do this stuff. Okay. I'm going to change directions a little bit just for the fun of it. And I'm gonna think about a color I wanna use on the um, other side. Now obviously certain colors aren't gonna show up as well, but I have a feeling that white just might do it. So let's skip what we're at right there for now and let's concentrate on one of our stripes. Yeah, there you go, I was right, wasn't I? You can see that nice and bright there. So there we go, we have our V, we have our uh, white in the middle stripe, that's really cool. Then we go to another color and have some more fun. Now let's go to the other side of the red side we did, and let's use this color. Yeah, this is nice. And I'm gonna fade it too. Now it's not gonna show up as much because it is a lighter color, but I'm still going to make it a little stronger down here. And I can even add another color down here if I want to make that really stand out. Okay, there we go. Let's go to those side. Start in the bottom corner. Yeah, and just let it fade out into the light blue. 
There we go. All right, so we got our uh, blue, light blue, showing through. And again, there are places where you could leave that light blue. We could stop right here if we wanted to and uh, wrap it up because um, the blue is a nice balance throughout the picture. Okay, so now let's, but we're gonna do a little bit more. <laughs> so let's go to the inside. Well, I did the same thing, didn't I? It's all right. Well, that's all right, we'll take care of it. There we go. liking it. You think, what do you think? That white really helps, doesn't it? I love that white in there. Okay, so now we have we have to decide here. How much light blue do I want to leave? I got light blue out here and in there. I think a little too much light blue. I think I'll leave the light blue here and color in these. But I want some contrast, right? So I might go with a color that's just a little bit darker um, and that would still stand out enough to um, to do, looking at my colors to see what I like best, what I have used, what I haven't used. So, okay. So, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead, since I already have dark here, don't wanna go too dark there. So what I think I'll do is, I think I'll reach for uh, a color that would still stand out nicely, okay? An orange. Switch sides, the opposite. That creates balance. I'm trying to be careful that when I color in one side, I do the same on the opposite end. Not necessarily directly across from it on the other side, but at an angle to match it. Um, and keep it more interesting. If I keep you guessing sometimes what I'm doing, that's kind of cool, okay? That works pretty good there, doesn't it? I like that. So. Right now, if I want to, I could leave the blue, light blue where I have it. I still think I'd like to do something with the light blue. Um, I think I'll leave the light blue here this time as I work, and I'm gonna color in the box stripes there and wrap it up, and here I can use a dark color again. Why is that? Because the dark side of my leaf is on the other side, and by using that light blue over there, it, the leaf still stands out, doesn't it, guys? I really felt like I needed to really close in on um, the dark edges so that my eye was pulled in. If I stay too light along the edges, I realized my eye was wanting to leave the paper. So I wanted to go a little darker. I believe that really helped a lot. Let's take a look at it and see. Really helped a lot. And then I have the light blue here. I can leave those light blue right there or I can pick another color. What do you think I ought to do? Well. Let's just think about this for a second. We have, uh, we've done a little bit with the green, but not a whole lot. So why don't we um, finish off, I'm not gonna leave any of the light blue showing. Now that you can, you can leave light blue showing or the color of your paper anywhere you want. You are the master of your artwork, you are the creator, you are the artist and professional. That's you, I'm talking about you. And in, in learning, there's no wrong answers when you're learning because everything you do, whether it's a mistake and you said, well, I think I would do that different next time. And I do that all the time, but I learned from it. So it's not wasted at all. However this turns out, I'm not wasting my time or my energies at all. Okay, so there you go. You have the finished product. You could do much more with this if you wanted to. But I think that we have a nice project there. And that is our fourth one. I want you to try to do four. 
even if it's all with markers or crayons, do four of them for me. Six by six inches on the outside, and you decide how you want to do the inside. So we have our examples that we did. Let's, uh, let's take a look at those real quick. Okay, there's that one. There's this one, my favorite, because I love colored pencils on black paper. You got the K. Okay. Okay, so I want you to do a total of four of these for me, and we will put together what is called an art quilt. We talked about our keywords, and that was one of them. And so uh, go ahead and uh, finish your four, and I'll show you the next step on how you create the quilt with those four. Okay, we are back, and for the final step, I called it an art quilt. What you can do is, with your four six by six inch, inch sheets, is take you two seven by 14, seven by 14, two seven by 14 sheets, and carefully tape them together on the back. There you go. And then, turn it over. Now you have the mat. And this is the neat thing about doing borders. A mat is like a border. So if you do a border for your artwork, that can actually act as a mat for you. Now I'm having to hold my camera because I had to pan back so far to get all this in. So I took my four art projects and I taped them together carefully so that they all matched on the edges. They're all the same size. Remember, six inch by six inch each one. And then I glued them together, not glued them together, taped them together. And I center them. Let me get this lined up for you. I center them on my black paper, my border. Now the next step I would do is I would glue those down on the back, that, that sheet of four pieces, isn't that awesome? And then I would uh, stick them right in the middle of my mat and glue them down there. And this is how we prepare art for our art shows if I do a group project, and we do quite a few of those. And this would be an example of a group project. The top left one, I used markers. The top right one, as you watch me, used colored pencils. Bottom left, I used um, crayons, those construction crayons from Crayola, awesome. Bottom right, colored pencils, again, Prismacolor, and faded colors into different things. So they all are a little different, aren't they? Not only in medium, but in technique. So there you go. That is our art quilt. And if you could do four of those and put them together, that'd be absolutely awesome, even if you don't have a black mat to mat. And I prefer black most of the time. It just really makes that art stand out and pop, doesn't it? Well, I'm John Sandy. I hope you've enjoyed this. It is art full of fun. Our subject for today, borders and letters. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for our next one here on Art Full of Fun.